Uh, it is college football final time, and we are going to start with a touchdown trifecta, courtesy of Tristan Jebbia, quarterback, Oregon State, taking on Cal. Jebbia, play action. This is what he's supposed to throw it to Tegan Quirantano for the 35-yard touchdown to Kitoriano. Oregon State takes a 14-7 lead. Off the toss, a reverse. Tyler Lindsay passes it back to Jebbia. This play always works. Right? Run it more often. Except when I used to run it. Everyone should run it. I don't think Philly special existed when you were there. That's true. All right. So now he's thrown one, he's caught one, and he's run one. Jebbia, the quarterback sneak. I love it when we began with some trifecta. Oregon State gets the win over Cal. 31-27. With that, welcome into college football final. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, Matt Barry. So happy to have you along on another college football Saturday. Going into this weekend, the week before Thanksgiving, we ID'd a couple of matchups in the Big Ten that were going to be very pivotal when it comes to those first college football playoff rankings that come out on Tuesday. Starting with Ohio State taking on Indiana in a game that Ohio State has won 25 in a row. Second quarter, game tied at seven. Give it to Big Master Teague. A virtual lock implication. Point total, 66 and a half for Joey. Ohio State wanted to run the football. Indiana runs that 3-3-5 scheme. Smaller bodies on the field. So they were the more physical dominant team up front. Good vision by Teague. Good blocking downfield. 307 rushing yards for the Buckeyes. 169 courtesy of Teague. Ohio State up 14-7. And Michael Penix finds David Ellis. Ellis fumbles. Baron Browning recovers it for the Buckeyes. And Indiana's going to go back and watch this film, and they're going to be kicking themselves. They turned it over four times. They had their chances in this game. You can't make those kind of mistakes on the road against Ohio State. So at this point, it's 21-7. Justin Fields runs left, makes it 28 -7. He was running for his life. He was sacked five times. He probably avoided 10 other sacks, but because of his athleticism, was still able to make plays. So, guys, the route is on. Ohio State, 20-and-a-half-point favorites. Point total, like we said, was a big one. But Penix and Ty Freifogel, they stay in this game. Fry Fogel, a second straight game, 200 yards. First time that's been done in the Big Ten. You can't play him man to man. So under a minute to play, 35 21. Penix, pick six, Sean Wade, touchdown. Uh, Ohio State gave up 491 passing yards, but this was the one key play in man coverage. Sean Wade making a break on the ball. All right, so here we go again. Penix to Fry Fogel, game not over. What a catch, what a grab. Flag on the play goes against the Buckeyes, 56 yards. Fry Fogel had 218 yards, and that's that man-to-man -man coverage that has given Ohio State problems this season. They've given up a lot of big plays. He spot here. Ryan Day decides to go for it. Yeah. Fourth and one, seven-yard line. Well, I mean, they were running the ball so well, but he goes play action, doesn't work. An opportunity to go up two possessions. Tom Allen's loving that. So all of a sudden, Indiana still has an opportunity. Penix under pressure, sacked by Pete Warner, and Ohio State survives. 42 to 35. Now 26 straight against Indiana. Really excited to be 4-0, uh, you know, coming off the, the bye week there and um, just looking back on, you know, everything we've been through in the last few months to be 4-0, be first place uh, in the Big Ten East, big, big deal. This family is stuck together, man. We, we said going into the game, we just have to figure out a way to <clears throat> win this game. That's all that matters is that you win. And, uh, you know, that's just the way that we were all brought up in playing sports. You win the game. That's it. We just got to play better, you know, and, and – uh... You know, it's a really good football team we played. They're substantially elevated level of play compared to the other teams we've played so far um, in, in so many different ways, you know. So, but for our guys to be able to, you know, get in that, get, you know, put ourselves in that position and, and obviously give them credit for making plays. But, but we continued to battle to the very, very end. All right, so Justin Fields, not his best game, though he did get the win. The first game in Ohio State history with a 300-yard passer, 150-yard rusher, and 150-yard receiver. Master Teague, 169 yards. Garrett Wilson also had a big game, 169 yards. The other one in the Big Ten, Wisconsin and Northwestern. This is basically going to decide the de facto Big Ten West. Uh, before the game, though, on Tuesday, Joey had some words about Northwestern. They got a bunch of Reese Davises out there running around. It, it's not the prettiest thing in the enough. world, and it is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very athletic, Reese. That's why I said that. Joey, what exactly does that? You know what? More on that in a minute. Peyton Ramsey to Charlie Mangieri back in the end zone for Northwestern. And what I meant is it's not flashy, but they get the job done. Ramsey, 23 of 44, 200 yards, 
two touchdowns, they find a way to make plays. So now you're calling Reese not flashing. No, he's not at all. All right. <laughs> Graham Merch downfield to Jim Ray. DK. What a action. Catch. Yeah, two man route. I really like this freshman receiver, DK. They're finding ways to get him more involved in this offense, both running and catching the football. All right, so I tell you what, you know who Ramsey likes? 7 7 here, Ramad Shaquille Bowman, 25 yard touchdown. How about the play on the sideline? Now, Northwestern ran the ball for 24 yards in this game, so it was all pass game. And this is a great throw by Ramsey, but an even better catch by Bowman on the sideline. To get two feet down. He's a talented player. We've called his name a couple of mm. times this season. Under nine to play, fourth quarter. Graham Mertz intercepted. Rough day for Mertz. Threw a few picks. Not exactly what we're accustomed to seeing out of the young quarterback. Northwestern 5 0 in the conference play for the first time since 1996. And re remember what Galloway said Tuesday? Well, Pat Fitzgerald does. You want to know what college football is all about? How about these fighting Reese Davises right here? Huh, Joey Galloway? How about the fighting Reese Davises? As long as Joey Galloway keeps talking, well, I think appreciate it. I think the guys heard him pretty loud and clear. Take that fight, Reese Davises. <laughs> hey, look. Coach, it was a compliment, number one, because I think highly of Reese Davidson. And Reese lets us know that he's a terrific athlete. Yeah. I appreciate you watching the show, though. Congratulations on the win. And moving forward, Northwestern now controls the Big Ten West. Well, he, It'll be an interesting matchup later he, on. He watched the show because he was on the show. Right. We interviewed him. And yeah, but we taped that. And then, so he wasn't actually there. He was like, he was awesome paying job paying. pulling a hamstring, backpedaling from your comment on He don't want none of me. I don't want you talking about Northwestern. He don't want none. I want to hear you yeah. on Northwestern about uh, their defense. Reese Davis plays really good defense. He's a hell I can cover yeah. and he can tackle. I've been really impressed watching Northwestern on that side of the ball this year, and they dominate. They really do sort of embody Pat Fitzgerald, the toughness, good football IQ. But here's the facts. They've got NFL talent on this defense. Patty Fisher, at inside linebacker, is 6'4", 260, and he makes plays. He's going to play on Sunday. It's a defense that rushes four. They play big zone coverage. They don't give up explosive plays, and they get takeaways. Their cornerback, Greg Newsom, the guy getting the pick right here, he shut everybody down early this season. He's going to play on Sunday. So because of this defense and also because of Peyton Ramsey, yep. the Indiana transfer, three-year starter at Indiana, plays with composure. The moments never seem too big for him. So you've got Michigan State, Minnesota, Illinois. Yeah. They're going to win out, and they're going to get a shot at Ohio State in the Big Ten title game. If they win that, Joey gets a conference title ring. That's amazing. Motivator That's on the it. team. I mean, look out. If Reese Davis ring. I, if I got my blue on. I got my Northwest. It's I'm, purple. I'm pretty sure they're purple, purple, but it's yeah, close enough. Okay. Dollar. Reese Davis. You do. know who wouldn't get that wrong? Reese Davis. Best I can do. I want to talk to you now about Ohio State, the other big game of the Big Ten. Justin Fields is going to look back and say, this wasn't my best game, but I think I did enough to get the win. And it's the first time all season long we've seen Justin Fields look human. He had 11 incompletions coming into this game and 11 touchdowns. And so when he doesn't have his best game, if you're good like Ohio State, you turn to the run game. We've seen Justin Fields really good at this game at times. Indiana leads the Big Ten in sacks. You know they're going to blitz. They're bringing pressure. But on the back end, they've had issues covering Justin Fields, recognizing the blitz. Great pickup by the back, the tight end. They stay in. This is a max coverage play. You only send out three receives into the route. And Justin Fields delivers a strike downfield to Wilson. You mentioned he had 160. 69 yards receiving. He's the big play guy you can't leave alone. Now, this is a Justin Fields that we've not seen this season. He had three interceptions in this game, but two of them were on plays like this where he had options. He might be the best athlete on the field at the time when the Ohio State's offense is out there. We know he can make plays. This is when he tries to do too much. He had seven seconds in the pocket. While he's going down, tries to throw one downfield, and it's picked off. And so what we see now with Justin Fields in a game like this, he did throw for 300 yards. Mm -hmm. And so moving forward, it'll be interesting on Tuesday. That's when the first rankings come out. This was the first real test for Ohio State. It was at home. It was raining. Didn't look great. Closer game than anyone expected. Now, what does the committee say about Ohio State in a close game where they had a chance to blow them out? They're going to say they got a quality win against a quality opponent that was ranked in the top ten. So things seem to be kind of separating themselves in the Big Ten as we head into Thanksgiving week. And over there isn't any separation. The Big 12. It appears that this one's going to go down to the final weekend of the season. We had Bedlam and Norman. Oklahoma has won 16 of 17. Spencer Rattler continued that trend early. Good run here, but a screen pass to Ramon. Ramondre Stevenson, they've really set this play up in this early score. And Palmer had this one, minus seven for the Sooners. And then Rattler to Marvin Mims. What a catch. And this is one of the best defenses in the Big 12 in Oklahoma State. 
Rattler started seven of eight in this game, but how about the catch by Mims going up, bringing it down? You know, people say it about Gundy's team, best defense he's had, but we didn't see it early on. Mikey Henderson, oh, a lot of good four. young weapons for Lincoln Riley. Mikey Henderson's a freshman tight end, but they hand the football off to him at running back, and they can obviously throw it. To and him. then the Sooners defense, David Aguayu, comes up with the interception, picked off Spencer Sanders. There's been an improvement in this OU team. It's been on the defensive side. They played much better. Watch the tip. But then the athleticism to get back on the ground. That's a defensive end. Long length diving catch and brings it in. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, this, this game was never no, a game. This is the key for Oklahoma. When you have an offense as explosive as theirs, when you get takeaways defensively, that's a 14-point swing. This is on the ensuing drive. Touchdown pass to Theo Weiss. Yeah, Theo Weiss had a nice game. Rattler had a nice game. Finds Jeremiah Hall, who does the rest. And it was all Oklahoma. We've seen this before out of them. Early season loss, finding their style at the right time. Here's Lincoln Riley. Well, Coach, a huge win against this great Oklahoma State team. How important was your defense there at the stretch? The biggest cheer I saw from you all night was them not getting in the end zone. In the yeah, fourth. we wanted to finish. We played great all night, really. And, you know, you just even though the game's probably in hand at that point, you want to finish and play to our standard, and we did that. How different is your team right now? It seems like all the pieces are coming together at the right time in the season. We're, we've gotten better. We have. Uh, we're a lot different team than we were earlier for a lot of different reasons. But our guys have hung in there and fought, and we're – you know, we're starting to play some pretty decent football right now. All right, so Gundy now 2-14 and 14 against Oklahoma. Good for a 125 winning percentage. I, I try to test good to so that. Good. Yeah. According to our friends at the Elias Sports Bureau, that winning percentage is tied for the worst against a single opponent among FBS coaches to debut since 1937. Still ahead on college football final, the best in the SEC in action on Saturday. Alabama and the Gators, they had it going. Plus, Cincinnati trying to stay in the conversation for the college football playoff. Could they get it done at the bounce house? We're off and running. This is college football final. Welcome back to College Football Final. Virtual lock implications. Jesse had Alabama minus 30 taking on Kentucky. How about this snap gone horribly wrong? 36 yards, a loss of 36 yards. Turnover on downs. Alabama takes over good field positions when they do. Mac Jones finds his guy, Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith had a big game. Nine catches, 144 yards, two touchdowns. More importantly, breaks the SEC record for career receiving touchdowns now at 33. Broke Amari Coopers. Now, Najee Harris. Boy, can this kid run. And this offense is on fire. They had 509 total yards. Big reason why Najee Harris, who now has 16 rushing touchdowns on the season. I'm telling you, just weapons everywhere. Up 21 Three, they wouldn't stop trying to keep Jesse's minus 30 looking good. John Metz at the third. And Mac Jones is at the top of a lot of Heisman lists right now through 16 for 24, 230 yards and two touchdowns. Just in the first half, he was that good. 28-3. And then Jesse had to feel pretty good about it. Jesse gets the cover. Alabama 20 straight games with 35 plus points. Nick Saban, he liked it. I think we played better as we went. You know, I think we played better and better as the game went on. I think we got started a little slow, but really went proud of the way our guys competed in the game. You got to give Kentucky a lot of credit. They played hard. They really, you know, played well early. And we struggled a little bit early, but I was really proud of the way our guys bounced back and played for 60 minutes. And we got to play a lot of players, so that was great. It was a depth game for Alabama. Let's keep it SEC, Florida, and Vanderbilt. Gators have scored 40-plus points in each of their last three games. Could Kyle Trask keep it up against Vanderbilt? Finds Kadarius Toney, who that a defender, takes the ball into the end. Yeah, no Kyle Pitts again for the Gators offense, but Kadarius Toney's been so good working out of the slot this year, it's too easy when the defender falls down. A little bit of a sleepwalk early on for the Gators. They finally got it going here. Trevon Grimes brings it in for the jump ball. What a catch. And Trask hasn't missed a beat. 30 touchdowns through seven games. It's never been done by SEC quarterback. Guys, watch the heads up here. Just over five and a half left in the third. Trask has time to run out of trouble. Points downfield to Justin Shorter, 46-yard game. And I think what you're seeing here, after 7.2 seconds to throw the football, is guys like Justin Shorter and Xavier Henderson, Keymore Gamble, guys that Dan Mullen has recruited at the receiver tight end position. You mentioned Gamble, two-yard touchdown here. Florida leads 31-10, to 10, just over seven minutes left. Emory Jones enters the game at quarterback. 
He gets Gamble inside the 30. Gamble takes it into the end zone. Yeah, and Florida's now gone eight straight games, scoring 35 points. Their offense looks as good as anyone in the country. Trask, first player in SEC history to throw 30 touchdown passes in his team's first seven games. He was good again. Something Coach Mullen told us was, you know, you know, he's been on championship teams and sometimes they've came out flat, but they still found a way to win. And, you know, obviously we came out pretty flat. Um, obviously you want to start a lot faster than that. But at the end of the day, we found a way to win. And that's all that matters. Every chance that we have to play on a Saturday is another opportunity that, you know, it's a blessing just to be out there, to be able to play. And, um, you know, we really just have to make the most of our opportunities that are given to us. Let's continue the collision course, shall we? Alabama and Florida continue to roll on what could be a collision course for Atlanta SEC Championship. They rank one and two in the SEC in points per game, yards per play, pass yards per game. And according to ESPN's FPI, both teams have a greater than 95% chance to win their respective divisions. Cincinnati taking on UCF. This game always a good one. Also virtual lock implications. Minus five and a half the number for Galloway coming in. Desmond Ritter, Josh Wiley, touchdown. Yeah, nice play here. Cincinnati, though, was sleepwalking early. They muffed two punts, and that gave USC, uh, UCF an early uh, lead. Needed Cincinnati to cover the touchdown. Ritter keeps it himself 19-14 since he goes for two, and they didn't get it. Yeah, I don't like the call, but they tried it. Now it's 22-17. And then Dylan Gabriel to Marlon Williams for the touchdown. Yeah, it wasn't easy against this Cincinnati defense, though. For Gabriel, only 243 passing yards, way below his season average. All right, so Galloway, you're up three, or UCF up three. Gabriel gets picked off by Derek Forrest inside the 20. And Gabriel had thrown an interception in his last four games. It's a big one here for the UC defense. So Ritter gets in for the touchdown. Cincinnati takes a 29-25 lead. So we're thinking, here we go, a little bit of separation. First and goal, seven and a half to play. Ritter finds Leonard Taylor for the touchdown. Desmond Ritter's been so good as of late. His fifth straight game now where he's accounted for at least four total touchdowns. All right, so Galloway, you're up 11. Again, your number's minus five and a half. But here comes UCF, Gabriel to Jalen Robinson. Yes, yeah, so UCF offense averaging 33 points a game. And they're right at their number. Look at this. They get the two. Look at this. Yeah, Look at this. You the, score. The, up by three. Just score a touchdown and be winning by 11. What are we doing? Not scoring. Playing the analytics game is what they're doing. Ana what The analytics book needs to get thrown in the Thanksgiving campfire. Joey, what are you thinking watching this? I'm starting to get nervous. Now, Luke Fickle's a good friend. Of, well, he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> uh, until the analytics really just took over this game at oh. the end. And then... That's on fourth down. All I needed was a field goal. Yeah. I need a C field goal. Cincinnati's now won two straight over UCF after losing three in a row. Galloway, I mean, it's your birthday, so that's not a good birthday present. It was your birthday this week. I mean, was that like a cry moment for you? I was getting a little nervous, honestly. Emotional. They got the ball back with four minutes left. I'm thinking, are they going to score? And then they get a couple first downs that's looking good. And I don't know what – I would have scored a touchdown to go up by two scores at but, the end. I mean, why not? Were you getting emotional? Were you getting emotional, though? Tears well. I'm still emotional. What okay. You, was I you, getting? Were you, you still are. Yes. As much as when you were getting a haircut, say, as a child, and oh. crying. Whoa, oh, look at hey. little Joey. That, 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 oh. that, that, hey, that was my first ever haircut. So I was going to ask you, are you afraid of the scissors or you didn't want to lose the, the braids? I mean, that's my first haircut. Joey, I got braids. Oh. I had an afro. I mean. It looks sweet. Maybe time that, to grow That back. was an emotional time, and I can't believe you guys are going to. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring it back. It was a bad day. That hurt. Cincinnati brought it. Let's go now to the Pac-12. Do they have any teams available for the playoff? Some would say Oregon still the best opportunity. UCLA true freshman Chase Griffin gets his first career start. Tell you what, Griffin acquitted himself quite well, trying to hit he did. right away, but he was hit by Noah Sewell. Yeah. Coughs up the ball. True freshman Noah Sewell gets the hit, coughs it up. McKinley's there to scoop it and score. Noah Sewell would leave the game with what looked like a serious injury. He was carted off. That's going to be a big blow for this Oregon defense. Turnovers, Oregon was so good at last year. Coming into this game, they were the worst team in the Pac-12 with takeaways. Very opportunistic. Then Tyler Shuck to Devin Williams, 19-yarder. And Shuck keeps this offense rolling. And you didn't know how he'd play this season and getting his first starts. And he looks pretty good. How about this? Watch C.J. Verdell. Mm. Coughs up the ball. Look at this bounce Members to bounce. Quantrez how about, Knight. How about Quantrez Knight? 
goes from Maryland to Kent State, now at UCLA, and he's Johnny on the spot. Seems like the natural destination and progress. Then Griffin to Greg Dulcich, 32-yard touchdown. It really looked like UCLA Kelly was going to knock off Oregon. It looked like they was going to have enough offense to stay in a scoring battle with a chance to win it. Okay, guys, this is with six seconds left mm. in the half. Griffin makes the throw. It's picked off by Jordan Happel. DTR is not playing. He's out because of COVID protocol. The true freshman looked good at times. This is one he wished he would have just eaten, taken the sack. With that pick six, Oregon takes the lead into halftime. Look, Chip Kelly's aggressive, but the decision to go for it backfires. Third quarter, shock, play fake. Hunter Campmoyer touchdown. Oregon extends its lead by 10. Fourth quarter, helmet sticker implications. Shuck knows it. Demetric Felton gets the carry up the middle. 11 yard TD. Felton had a big game, 34 carries, 167 and two touchdowns. UCLA takes the lead. Here so we go. Here we go. We got a good game. 27 seconds left. Griffin rolls to his left, tries to find Kyle Phillips and cannot. Oregon has now won eight of their last nine against UCLA. 38 35, the final. Ducks hang on to get the win. Who's in? Is Alabama still the best? Did the Ohio State scare? Scare Jesse and Joey? Find out more. And will Galloway tear up one more time on a Saturday? And can Liberty Magic continue against another ACC team? Find out next on College Football Final. How about the Zach Wilson swagger for BYU? Rocket ahead band Jim McMahon style that says like any team, time and place. Love it. Bring it, people. Wilson to Isaac Rex. And we always talk about Zach Wilson, the season he's having. We don't talk enough about his targets. Guys like Dax Mill. And how about the freshman, Isaac Rex? Zach Wilson, just a living, breathing Lance Harbor. I don't want your life. Wilson. Neil Powell. And BYU needs to make as many statements as they can. Their resume doesn't have to marquee wins, but they win their games big. How's this for a statement? Seventh win by 30 plus points this season. Mm. We were excited to see Trevor Lawrence and Clemson back in action against Florida State, but just hours before the game, they couldn't play it. It was postponed. A Clemson player tested positive. Neither medical staff could agree to play the game, and so they didn't. And now let's take a look at who you guys think could be in the college football playoff with the Capital One fan votes. As far as the top teams are concerned, it was a pretty uneventful day. Alabama ran over Kentucky. Ohio State a pretty close game against Indiana at home. A lot of people didn't expect it to be that close. And Cincinnati got another big win against a high-powered UCF offense. So my top five look the same. Jess, I, you got some change over I got here? a little bit of a change. I'm okay. going to start with Texas A&M. Still got them at number five. Love the way Kellen Mond's playing. Last time we saw them, they beat South Carolina 48-3. They've had their last two games postponed against Ole Miss and Tennessee. They need to get those played to really try and press the committee. The big change for me is going to be Ohio State. Now, last week I had them number three. I'm moving them down to number four. I, from what I've seen through four games, I don't think they're as talented a team as they were a year ago, and that's okay. Yeah. If they went out, they're going to get in the college football playoff. I'm worried about the secondary. They're giving up way too many plays in the passing game. Give up 491 passing yards against Indiana. They don't have Akuda and Arnett at corner like they did a year ago. Two first-round picks. So I think the three teams I have ranked ahead of Ohio State right now are more complete at this point. Number three. I'm going with Clemson and of course they have the loss at Notre Dame. Notre Dame's my number two team. Uh, Clemson obviously banged up in that one. I think when they're healthy and they get Trevor Lawrence back and they get all those big playmakers on yeah. defense. They're still one of the best teams in the country. Notre Dame the physicality on offense and defense. We know Ian books playing better. Can't wait to see them take on UNC next week and like you Joey I've got Bama number one. Mac Jones to me should be the front runner right now for the Heisman Trophy defense is getting better but they got to play Auburn next, who they've lost two of the last three to, so that's going to be interesting to watch. And here's what's interesting to me is the fact you move Ohio State down. And typically speaking, as we go through our rankings year in and year out, I usually don't react week to week when teams have a tough game. So Ohio State moves down. It'll be interesting on Tuesday, though. The real college football rankings come out. Yep. We'll pay attention to see where Ohio State is now. They've had a tough game against Indiana. Finally had a real game because a top 10 opponent. We'll see what the committee does with Ohio State. Matt, back to you. Yeah, Joey, that's going to be interesting as well because you've got teams like Jesse mentioned. Clemson hasn't played in a couple of weeks. they got Trevor Lawrence coming back. Their game against Florida State postponed. You may agree with the boys. You may not. Here's a look at some of the big games coming up this Saturday. You've got the Iron Bowl, Notre Dame, North Carolina. Don't forget to give your Capital One fan vote via Sports Center's Twitter handle on Monday.
Tennessee came into their game against Auburn having lost four straight all by double digits. We had good Bo Nix. You know what? Put this in a box and give me a Baker's dozen. Uh, I think Greg McElroy said that. It's good in this offense now the last couple weeks. Somebody else other than Seth Williams making big plays deep down the field at receiver. And this is Jarrett Garantano and why he would get benched later. Smoke Monday 100 yards. And Tennessee had almost 100 more total yards in Auburn in this game, but it's plays like this, the mistakes made by Tennessee, and that's why Auburn goes on to win. Auburn wins. Iron Bowl looming. Mississippi State, Georgia. Hey, welcome back to college football. JT Daniels mm. first starts. It's August 31st, 2019, while at USC. JT was good. Uh, Jermaine well, Burton, 46 yards. This Georgia offense has been missing is accuracy on the deep ball. You got guys like Jermaine Burton, a freshman with speed. Give him a chance. Hey, and you know what? Find him again for a touchdown. And they gave him eight chances. He had eight catches, 197, and two touchdowns in this game. Ties it up at 17. Got some fight out of Mississippi State earlier. It was good to see that in Mike Leach and the Bulldogs. Later, Daniels Burton again. 401 passing yards, four TDs for JT Daniels. He looked comfortable. He looked confident on that knee, of course, that he injured last year at USC. Then Will Rogers pass to Osiris Mitchell. Ball down at the three. Mississippi State would go on to score the next play. Tied at 24. Now, Daniels wide open to Kiaris Jackson for a 40-yard touchdown. Deep ball was great. It was. And what's interesting, Georgia had eight rushing yards in this game. If you said they were going to have eight rushing yards in any game this season, you would assume that they would lose. Don't trigger Georgia fans because they're finally excited they can throw the ball. Don't get them keyed <laughs> up on the lack of running game. Either way, they hold on to win 31-24. Helmet sticker implications in this one. We'll get to that coming up in just a bit. How about the Battle of the Boo, LSU Arkansas? 407 left in the fourth quarter. TJ Finley got the start for the Tigers, finds Jare Jackson. Miles Brennan out for the rest of the season with an injury. The true freshman quarterback, he looked good. He looked comfortable surveying the field, working his progressions. 271 passing yards for TJ Finley. All right, Arkansas down 27 24. Felipe Franks looks to lead him to a win. Fourth and three. Complete to Traylon Smith for the first down, big completion. Your Arkansas fan, look, you might not win all your games, but this is a much improved Arkansas team that has been in every game. All right, a chance. College kicker situation. A.J. Reed. That didn't look good off the uh, foot at all. Little short. Fifth straight year, LSU gets to win that boot. 27-24. Trophy game. The final. Missouri, South Carolina, Battle of the Columbias. Mike Bobo's first game as interim head coach. Will Muschamp, as you know, was let go earlier in the week. Connor Bazelak, 20-yard pass to Toski Dove. After Muschamp got fired, everybody's opting out on defense now, including South Carolina's two starting corners, and that hurt them in this game. Dove falling backwards. Missouri would win this one. Final score, 17-10. Still ahead on college football final. Could Michigan beat Rutgers? That's the question. And Penn State, they haven't won yet. Did that change Saturday? Plus, Nevada, 5-0. How about that? Going out west, the Pack 5-0. Go, Pack, go. Said it with the Packers accent. Not really accurate, but this is still Terrible. college football final. Awful. There hasn't been a better story in college football than Liberty. They were looking to go 3-0 and was Hugh Freeze against the ACC this year. 24 seconds to go before the half. Malik Willis rolls right, finds Noah Frith in the end zone. And a lot of Liberty success is because of Malik Willis. He's an athletic quarterback that throws the ball well. Ties the game at 7, then Willis to Jerome Jackson. Liberty takes a 14-7 lead over NC State. Fourth quarter, nine minutes to go. Liberty up, third and eight. Mm. Willis picked off by Aiden White. NC State's defense played him tough, though. 13 of 32 was Willis, and he threw three picks. That sets up Zonovan White for the touchdown. NC State fails the two-point conversion. They lead 15-14, same score, third and four. Willis to Frith, 27 yards. Yeah, and it's usually the running game of Liberty. Only 100 yards, 107 yards rushing in this one, but the passing game gets them in position to win the game. At college, oh, no. Field goal blocked. Alex Barbier's game-winning attempt blocked, and NC State ends Hugh Freeze and Liberty's run. Obviously disappointed. feel like uh, our kids played. Uh, their guts out as hard as they could for us, and uh, that we, myself, uh, didn't didn't have a good enough plan for them to score enough points, and um, just uh, it's not a not a, not a good feeling. Proud of them though. Proud of the way they fought. 
All right, more Big Ten fun. Michigan and Rutgers. This game was really, really good. Down 17 0. John Harbaugh benches Joe Milton in favor of Cade McNamara. McNamara gave him a bit of a spark late in their loss last week against Wisconsin. Gave him another spark in this one, finding Sainer still for a touchdown. So Michigan would take the lead. No overdraw. 11 yard pass to Aaron Crookshank for the touchdown. Rutgers now trails by two. Had to go for two. And on the two point conversion, Vidral takes it himself. Yeah, give Rutgers a lot of credit. Got up early, 17 0. Michigan comes back. But at the end of the game, Rutgers hanging in there. They answer. Let's go to overtime. We go to overtime. Overtime, first play, second OT. Vadral throws back across his body to Bonnie Haskins, 25 yards. This to the was score. a nice bounce back game for Vadral. Threw three late picks in their loss against Illinois last week. Threw three TDs against Michigan. Now Michigan's turn. McNamara keeps it for the touchdown. Michigan got their running game going finally in this game for 148 yards. Third OT, Hassan Haskins, one yard for the touchdown. Failed two point conversion. Fourth and long now for Rutgers. Vadral. Oh. This pass defense for Michigan. They've been maligned all early this season. They come up with a big pick here in the end zone for Jim Harbaugh. Much needed win. Looks like Michigan's found their new quarterback as well. I'll tell you what. Great comeback out of Michigan. 48-42 to get the win. They looked like they were dead in the water against Rutgers. What about Iowa and Penn State? 14-41 left second quarter. First and goal. Tyler Goodson. Touchdown. Ira ran the ball well in this game, 178 yards, but it was timely runs when they needed to get big plays they found in the run game. So Will Levis stepped in or started at quarterback. Zach Van Balkenberg recovers the ball for Iowa. It's turnovers at the quarterback position have been killing Penn State early this year. Four turnovers in this one, they would go back to Sean Clifford. So yeah, Will Levis, was he was taken out, so Clifford given another opportunity, and, and as you said, same as it ever was, Pick six, 71 yarder. Yeah, and Clifford's tied for second in the Big Ten with turnovers. It has been the downfall of Penn State in this season as they move to 0 5. Penn State is 0 and historically. We'll get to that in a minute. But Iowa wins 41 21. And James Franklin, uh, he knows what it is. It's, it's not good enough. There's obviously a lot of circumstances uh, going on this year, but but none of that none of that matters at the end of the day. We got to find a way to play good football, and we have not done that. So I, I, I get it. We're, we're being challenged right now. Uh, we've had to learn how to handle success, and now we're having to learn how to handle adversity. And it's even more, it's even more challenging um, when they don't have the normal support system around them that they that they nor typically would have. All right, so Penn State is amongst the eight winningest programs in major college football history and has suffered its first 0-5 start ever. Among the others, only Michigan and Ohio State have not started a season 0-5 in their program's history. Just an unbelievable story at Penn State this year, not for the good. Illinois, Nebraska. Brandon Peters gets the start. He was back. Josh Edamatter Bebe. Touchdown. Yeah, Brandon Peters had missed three games due to COVID protocol, but he looked good in this one. 18 of 25 throwing it. All right, so here we go. Illinois punting. Blake Hayes sees no one. He's like, hey. Play of the day. I'm going to run it. What? Oh, my gosh. It's they open. Kick it. I'm go oh. See? Oh. He jump cuts the and air. Honestly, yeah. Stutter steps the air. It <laughs> jump cut the air. That could have been. The Matt Barry Award. <laughs> I thought that for a minute it was going to be the Matt Barry Award, but that was not. impressive. But the Matt Barry and Rudy Participation and Effort Award goes to Will Mobley from Temple. Watch, let's go. Here we go, Barry. Go get him. Go, <laughs> <laughs> Barry. You got to, you got to dig in. <laughs> I, I got to give Mobley credit, though. I got to give Barry credit. He knows at this point right now he's going to have to cut this off. Let's he's go. been shuffling over there. Let's Look go. at the speed Let's on my go. guy, Will Mobley. Barry, I, I know you could tote it back in the day as well. He there gets he there. There he is. Oh, oh, come, come on. on. He Just truly gotta, believed. Finish. In this moment right here, he <laughs> believed he had it. I got it. Oh. <laughs> I'm how, about you. how about your boy who just hurdles, hurdles the wall, <laughs> belly flops on the hard time. Eventually, you're going that was my there. moment. You're going to get there. That eventually. was my moment. That's the most athletic you've looked this year. By the way, Thursday, Tulane, Tulsa, punter laid out the kick returner. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't on a Saturday. It wasn't on a Saturday. I put that in. I will have my vengeance <laughs> in this life or the next. Still ahead on College Football Final. It is the best of the best. We were doing it. 
Plus, uh, you know how we find each other for saying and stu doing stupid things? How about Joey on live television having no idea what we were talking about during one of our half times? 1917 Bearcats, Joey, who wins? Northwestern's been really good on defense in the second half, but I expect Wisconsin to come back. Okay, I was uh, asking I'm, you about I'm that. I'm going to go game. with Cincinnati. Joey, that is a, That's a dollar. dollar. Football playoff rankings come out. Jesse and Joey, part of that. Can't wait. 7 p.m. Eastern ESPN and the ESPN app. It's been so fun. Sun Belt, Fun Belt. College football final. Coastal Carolina hosting Appalachian State, third and seven. Grayson McCall has this shot in his bag. He can run it. And Grayson McCall, 6'3, 220. Watch the athleticism. Pulling away from defenders. Takes it to the end zone. They can't catch him. Very athletic quarterback. Yeah, this was all App State early on. That kind of ignited him. Failed two point conversion, 17 15. Then McCall, 19 yard pass here to CJ Marable. And McCall does a great job here faking the run. He's just so good. He's so calm. Only a freshman and one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the country. Coastal takes a 21 20 lead. Fourth quarter, Coastal Carolina trails by two. Reese Wright, three yard touchdown. Except the failed two point conversion, Coastal regains the lead 27 23. Looking for one last shot, fourth and 22. Zach Thomas's pass intercepted, just go down. Yeah, Zach Thomas struggled in this game through three interceptions. And if I get an interception, Barry, I'm not just going down. The I'm trying to go <laughs> for the Carolina. Now nine straight wins dating back to last season. That was a backdoor cover band on some side action. Go either get way. it. Shanta clears 34 23. Good win for them. Arkansas State taking on Texas State. A lot of offense here. Lane Hatcher drops back. Jonathan Adams, I great love it. catch. Quarterback's got a lot of confidence in Jonathan Adams. Fits that in between two defenders, and Adams pays him off for it. Dan, what you talk about a quarterback with confidence. What about Brady McBride? <laughs> Pass out to Travis Granham, who puts a move on a defender. Brady McBride will get the credit, but uh, the receiver did all the work as usual. Texas State retakes the lead. Then Jamal Jones lowers his shoulder. Arkansas State back up four. This was 38 like, yeah, seconds which, which left. Which offense has it last? First and goal. Calvin Hill is the answer, Jeff. 1,150 total yards from both teams in this game. Jake Spavadal and Texas State, they get their second win of the season. Good for them. A lot of offense. 47-45. The final. Georgia Southern and Army. Army down 27 21. Jacoby Buchanan, two yard touchdown. Army up one. Cadets looking to get those push ups going. They did. 21 seconds left. Georgia Southern at the Army 30. Justin Tomlin tries to scramble. Don't take a sec. Do not take a sec. Yeah, well, they're out of time. It's first out. down. I know. Take a sec. And look at we've got tick, 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 tick. Trying to get to the line. And they blew a big lead in this one. They can't get the snap off. And because of it, Army comes back to win 28-27. Some would say that could be eligible for a dollar. We got a new segment this year on College Football Final. It's called That's a Dollar. We fine each other a dollar for saying or doing stupid things. Some would say it's a Barbie world. That's a dollar. That's a dollar. That is a dollar. Doink misses. Ah. Look at his boy 34 right here. He's like, oh, oh. no. You didn't even headbutt what a UFC are you doing? Anymore. Go sell some lemonade, bring back 50 cents each, and pay your dollar. <laughs> I don't care. You're the punter. You got one job. Juggle, got it. No, I don't. Oh, James Bean hanging out. That'll help with the pain. It's a terrible camera angle. Oh. It's a game. We're here. We're playing. Did I miss class? Actually, there was a kick, but TV was not ready. This is ill-advised every day of the week. First dollar today. We got a rivalry game. Northwestern Wisconsin. Little turnover. I'm off for a little tomfoolery, but not petty theft. How about my guy JR Pace? He just ganks too many towels. What is this guy hoarding them? 50 cents per towel, that's your dollar. And also, return the towels, please. Stealing towels. All right, Southern Miss UTSA. Be dare to be Scoop great, score. Charles Wiley. Scoop. Oh, oh, man. Big fella, Charles Wiley. You got to be better. Look at this. I mean, it, you'd never, you have a chance at greatness. And then you just kick it out. That's that's definitely a dollar charm. Look, Kentucky was struggling to slow down Alabama's offense. So with their 11 guys they had, so they try to throw it in official, get the 12th guy playing. <laughs> but if you watch, come on, man. Watch Brandon Eccles. I mean, the officials get in trying here. to get out. <laughs> Brandon Eccles, no, no, get in here. We need help. 
were having trouble tackling. <laughs> the officials looking for his head. Oh my God. And then they knocked him down. Oh Seriously. Fumbled. And then he's dapping him down like, guys, I gave it all I had. What a pinball machine. He would have definitely not cried during his first haircut. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Spencer Sanders intercepted by David Uwebu. Yeah, this D-line from Oklahoma, man, they've been playing so good these last five games. Now, what an athletic play there by Uwebu. We just showed Jother Georgia Southern and Army. Derek Canteen, you know what? He dared to be great. That ball just comes out of nowhere, scores. And Army ran the ball for 240 in this game, and that one wasn't so good. Great defense. Good for Canteen. I bet. it up. Everyone got to tackle someone. You know what? Has to hold on to the ball. You know what that shows me is Canteen was thirsty for the football. That's awful. That's, That's a dollar. A dollar. That's also a dollar. It's right. a late dollar. Just it's let fine. it ride. Indiana, Ohio State. Hop on for a good time. Ty Freifogel, 56 yard. Freifogel had a big game. He really did. He does this over Sean Wade, the best corner for Ohio State, who also gets called for pass interference on this. But, you know, the question marks are going to keep coming about this secondary for Ohio State. Freifogel, though, this dude is for real. Vanderbilt, Florida. Florida got the win. Vandy gets in top plays. Ken Seals to Amir Abdul Rahman. Look at the toe tap on the side. And it's the Florida defense that's the issue for this team moving forward. But how about this catch? You get two feet down. You only need one. But just to show off, he got down two. That's exactly what the two feet is. It's exactly. like, look, I know what I need, but I'm going to give you what you need. Number one, Spencer Rattler to Marvin Mims. Spencer Rattler's a freshman. Ow! Marvin Mims is a freshman. You're going to see a lot of these two for years to come out of Norman, Oklahoma. Unbelievable athletic depth. Bring the Mims. Abilene Christian. This is how the offensive line celebrates a TD. They just yank their coach's shirt off. WWE stuff. Seems like aggressive. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's coming. The most coveted individual award in sport. Helmet stickers. We've selected them, and they are better than ever this week. So is college football final. Iowa State needed to get by Kansas State for their looming game against Texas, and a big game that's going to be. First and ten for the Cyclones. Brock Purdy to Joe Skate. Nice job by Brock Purdy here against the Blitz, finding his best target outside. Three touchdown passes in the game for Purdy. Guys, has there been a quieter, better player in college football than Brees Hall? Brees Hall had 15 carries, 135, two TDs. He leads FBS in rushing yards. And and he needs to start getting attention later here. This one for 21 yards. They had lost 11 of their last 12 against Kansas State, but they win this one 45 nothing in Iowa State. They're the only one loss team in conference play left in the Big 12. That's the third largest shutout for Iowa State in conference play ever. Pac-12 after dark. Utah hosting USC. Utah's first game of the season. Keaton Slovis sacked, fumbled. Nephi Sewell, Utah touchdown. USC offense has looked a little sluggish in their first couple games. They did get some points early in this one, but get a big turnover. And then Slovis hits Tyler Vaughn for a touchdown. Well, the reason why they've looked sl uh, sluggish is because quarterback Keaton Slovis' accuracy has just really been up and down, but a nice strike on that. Throw. And then another nice strike here. Hits the tight end over the middle. Always good to see Pac-12 after dark back on television. What about Arizona and Washington? This one, all Huskies start to finish. Dylan Morris to Puka Nakua. Yeah, and it was the run game of Washington in this game that really was the difference. 233 yards and four touchdowns on the ground as Washington ran away with it. They did. Big win for the Huskies, 44-27. They are 2-0 to start the season. Time now for the best part of the program. The helmet sticker ceremony, as always. Joey. I'm going to Lonzo Booth, Eastern Kentucky. 27 rushes, 178, and three touchdowns. He's the third player at Eastern Kentucky to go 153 touchdowns in the last 25 years. Cade McNamara came off the bench for Michigan at quarterback, threw four touchdowns, ran for one against Rutgers, 260 yards passing. Becomes the fourth player at Michigan to throw four and run for one in the same game. Guys, who is going to replace Justin Herbert for this Oregon offense? It's Tyler Shuck, and he's looked good in the early part of the season. 334 passing yards, three touchdowns in their win over UCLA on Saturday. Fourth Oregon quarterback with consecutive games of 300 passing yards and three touchdowns. I'm going Brady McBride, Texas State as they beat Arkansas State. 
443 passing yards and five touchdowns. He's the second player in program history to pull that off. USC transfer JT Daniels became the first player in Georgia history to throw four TDs in his first game with the school. Also threw for 401 yards against Mississippi State. And it just kind of makes you wonder if they had JT Daniels against Bama and Florida, would they be a two loss team? And they would still would have lost. And with all he's been through, good to see JT Daniels back. Final helmet sticker of the night, DJ Turner from Pitt. This kid was electric on Saturday. 15 receptions, 184 yards, and one touchdown. 15 receptions, second most in team history, and most since 1968. Quickly, 30 seconds, final talk from Saturday. The Big Ten really hatched itself out. Now we know Ohio State in the West, in the East, and then Northwestern in the West. So Reese Davis is this I was just going to say, coming. Reese Davis plays defense. That dude he does. play really good on play. He's going to give Northwestern an opportunity this year. I bet Reese Davis, I bet they're going to have a lot of turkey at Thanksgiving. We'll see you guys next week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Everybody carb load. It's the healthiest way to go about life.